Today I will show you how to make this explosion effect, so stay tuned. First off, I would recommend you to create an empty object and always create one object underneath it that is the mesh if you want to combine some object to a bigger one. But we will get rid of this and just deactivate the bevel. And we will go to effect particle system to create the particle system. And here on the right we see some values we can set. Let's create some materials. Um, I have a particle cloud image here and the particle fire cloud image. If you want to have these images as well, you just go to the asset store. There you will find the Unity standard asset pack. And if you go down to standard assets, effects, no, sorry. Um, particle systems, textures, you will find all the textures you need for this tutorial. To create a material, we right click, create and say material. And we have to choose the lightweight render pipeline if you're using the lightweight render pipeline. Otherwise, you have to choose particles. But particles is here as well. And we will choose lit. I will rename my material and drag and drop this file into the albedo. As a rendering mode, I will use additive and uh, make sure to set the colors uh, to the highest point. The image import tab looks like this. Now we can use it. Um, I already done it. So you go to fire and drag and drop it here into the material and it looks like this. So now we have to change the emission shape. It's a sphere and now it looks a little bit better. So the, in the main tab, the duration should be one. It shouldn't loop, it should be one explosion. And the start lifetime should be one second. And the start speed is 100 units per second. The start size, I think seven is a good size for the start. And the start rotation can be minus 100. And we say render between two constants, so minus 100 and 100. So if we want to have a look at it, we just press play or maybe we uh, keep it looping as long as we are not done yet. The start color should be some yellowish color. Uh, we will change the color over lifetime in a few seconds. The gravity minus five because it should be affected by the gravity. Um, simulation space, local, one scaled. We can leave the rest as it is. We, it should not play on awake. We want to play it when we actually trigger it. Um, and the emitter velocity should be transform and not the rigid body. Okay, but we will come to sub emitters in a second. So, Kali mode, always simulate. I think these are the settings that you will need for the explosion. So the emission, because we just set up the emission, let's change it. So it doesn't make sense to have a rate over time. We want one clear explosion and therefore there is a burst mode. Yeah, you see now it's more like an explosion. And we want to have a little bit more, maybe 40 instead of 30. One cycle means one burst and that's it. And we can leave the rest as it is. So limit the velocity over lifetime. This is one thing that we definitely should do. And we can always choose um, if we want to have a constant or curve or random and so on. And I think the curve is, is very good because now we can uh, really specify how it should be. So I would recommend to have a very fast start and after that it should be a little bit slower. So it's really one big explosion. I can zoom out a little bit and then you can see more. It's one explosion and then it slowly gets slower. So we can dampen this to have an even better effect. So now it's really uh, an explosion. Um, we can't really tell um, where the single particles are and this is what we want. So the next thing is the color over lifetime. And here we can choose the random between two gradients. No, or a gradient. Oh, it's a, it's already a gradient. Yes. So we want to start yellow. 
because we already set up yellow as the starting color. And we want to end with black maybe and in between a red color. So yes, that's what it should look like. Um, and the alpha is really zero here. So this is what it looks like. I think it's quite okay. Um, yeah, we can live with that, right? Yeah, it's okay. So let's rotate the particles. Um, yeah, maybe 10 is a good velocity. So to have just a little bit of velocity in it. Now the outline really looks um, confusing because you already see the velocity, but it makes... Okay, now the particle effect looks like a heartbeat and we want to have some sub-emitters. For example, let's do the sparks first. Okay, so we create uh, effect particle system underneath it and we call it sparks. Okay, right now we can't see it because it's so small, uh, but we will change it. So the time with one we do not want, or maybe we want to loop it to uh, have a look right now. So the last thing we will do is to change the loop. Lifetime one, start speed is much faster than the um, mother explosion, if you want to call it that way. Start size, uh, also a little bit um, smaller. Okay, we don't want to have a 3D start rotation. The gravity modifier is 50 because it's so fast you want to have a higher gravity modifier. And the culling mode is always simulate. Um, and then let's talk about the emission. It's the same. Uh, we will use a burst. 30 is okay for this time. And let's talk about the shape. Now the shape is a cone. And we change it to sphere so that it has the same shape as the mother explosion. Um, the radius, you can set this to 7, so it's really as big as the explosion. Maybe let's change the renderer first so that we really can see something. Okay, we will take the fire again. So this is a good spark. If you just scale it to a level that looks like a spark. And therefore we have a stretched billboard. The length scale is maybe 10. Okay, so let's have a look. Now we really can see the sparks and looks quite okay. Uh, we do the same trick as always with the uh, um, other particle system. We will limit, limit the velocity over lifetime and we will dampen it a little bit now that the sparks are not flying too far away. And now let's set the color over lifetime. Maybe we want to have yellow sparks. And they should disappear, so we set the alpha to a zero at the end. Um, we set the rotation over lifetime, and again, maybe the same as the parent. And the size over lifetime. Um, I would make it bigger. You have some presets here. I would just make it linear smaller, so that these sparks are really disappearing at the end. So you can't see them because the color alpha is really high at the end and uh, you can't see them because they are so small. But that's it for the sparks. Let's create a new material for our second particle. We uh, name it smoke and the albedo is just this texture here. And we will use uh, particles, no lightweight engine, uh, lightweight render pipeline, particles lit, uh, additive, and albedo should be the smoke. Yeah, it looks right here. So um, I guess we can use it. So it's ready. Let's go to particle system here and create one. We will call it smoke so we simulate I hope ah there it is so if you add a new particle system I have to uh, click restart a few times um, I don't know why but now I can see it this was the error before 
uh, we had before with the sparks. So the smoke goes here. Now it looks really like smoke. And let's set the shape again to a sphere. Now it's more smoky. Uh, the emission is also a burst. The emission is also a burst. So we will add a burst. No, one is enough. Uh, maybe 40 clouds. And the shape is a sphere. The sphere should be a little bit bigger, maybe 10. So a little bit bigger than the sparks. Um, I think it's okay. Yeah, it looks quite right. Um, they are kind of small, but let's first change the lifetime so that it has the same lifetime as all the other particles. Um, the lifetime is one, the duration is one. The start size should be a little bit bigger. 10, yes, that looks like smoke. That's good. Okay, start rotation, minus 100. Um, doesn't really matter, uh, just to have some variations. So let's take minus 100 and 100. Um, start color, yeah, it doesn't matter. Maybe a little bit black. So the smoke is not visible, so gray. Yes, that's a good color. Okay, uh, gravity modifier, minus two. Now the smoke goes up because it's so light. Um, and this diff differs. This is why every particle system has its own gravity modifier because smoke goes up and every other things like sparks go down. Okay, now change the color of a lifetime. Um, they shouldn't be visible right away. And at the end they should disappear. And in the middle, middle you should see them. Yes, they are only there for a short period. Uh, can I delete this one? Yes. I want to have some gray, grayish. So the rotation of a lifetime, maybe 90 to let the smoke a little bit rotate while it's going up. It looks a little bit better. Um, let's see the size of a lifetime. I think it's quite right. So the smoke should go bigger and bigger and then disappear. Um, it's not bad. Okay, let's, let's change something. It, it does look quite right, maybe. Yeah, this looks better. So let's save it and use it in the game. So this is only one variant to uh, make a quick explosion. There are some other variants as well. To make it available in the game, I just set up this Babel script and this Babel script um, is looking for physics objects. So the Babel is a physics object. So let's have a look at the Babel script. It's just a boom function and what you are doing is you just play every particle system. So make sure that you uncheck the looping in every particle system and that you find every particle system in your object and just call play. Um, and if you want to have the explosion as a physical event, you can create a sphere in the physics world and then you get all overlapping objects. And if the overlapping object has a component physics object, so this is just a plain mono behavior in my project, then I will add an explosion force. You have to set the position. I add a down vector, but you can just take the position. Uh, this is a force, 200 units and 10. This is a range. Uh, it should match with the overlapping sphere. Um, and you can uh, add some things to make it a little bit nicer, like a camera shake. And this is what it could look like in the final game. Just boom, and you have an explosion. So. Uh, that's it. The next time I will make a video, it will be about the camera shake. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned.